In this video, I'm going to show you how you can combine effects and motion paths. A little while back, there was someone on one of the Adobe forums or communities that was asking about combining effects and motion paths. At first glance, of course, when you look in Adobe Captivate, you just see a handful of effects under the different categories. But one of the great things is, is that you can combine these effects and motion paths. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So inspired by all the science fiction that I enjoy watching and stuff, I found some images that I'm going to use for this project here. So let's go ahead and open up the images that I found for free on stock.adobe.com. First one is, I believe, a spaceship. And what I need to do is get rid of the background. I want just the spaceship here. So first of all, I'm going to double click my layer. That is a locked background here. And we'll just click OK. And um, we will select and mask this image here. And actually, um, I'm just going to use the new select subject feature in Photoshop to make this real easy. And I'm going to click OK. That looks perfect. Now, this was a JPEG file, so I'm going to export this as a PNG. So we'll go ahead and I'll just save this to my desktop there. And we need a background. We need some space. If we're going to make a space travel slide, we've got this image of a planet. Uh, it might be Earth. It might be somewhere else. The first thing I need to do is crop and resize it so that it's appropriate for e-learning here. So I'm going to choose my crop tool here. I'm going to choose uh, the aspect ratio that I'm going to use in this project. And we'll go ahead and click OK. That looks fine. And I will also export this. I'll stick with JPEG in this case here. I don't think it needs to be a PNG. And it certainly doesn't need to be 3,000 some odd pixels by 2,000 some odd pixels. So I'll take advantage of optimizing my project file by just creating what I need here. So I will export that also to my desktop. And we can close Photoshop at this point here. Okay, so let's switch to Adobe Captivate. I'm going to open up a blank project. I want this to be kind of large on the screen here. I'm going to use uh, uh, HTML scaling later when I publish it. So I'm going to choose custom and I'm going to input 1470 by 900, which it just so happens to be my preferred size of blank project or non-responsive design project. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit create here. And I'm going to go ahead and insert a blank slide and get rid of this title slide for right now. So we have our edited files. The first thing I want to do is apply the background to this particular slide here. So I'm going to choose custom and we're going to choose image fill and we'll uh, click on the fill color or fill pattern, if you will. Click on the folder icon. And we'll select our JPEG image that we've created and saved on our desktop here. We'll click on open. That looks fantastic. Uh, while I'm doing this here, I'm going to get rid of the skin editor. I don't want that. And we don't want any borders showing. And in fact, if you want to really make it look cool, your HTML background can just be a dark color like this dark blue here. Uh, so that'll really make it look cool, especially with HTML scaling here. So now we want to add our spaceship. So let's go ahead and click on media and image and we'll select the PNG file. And remember, of course, we made this a transparency. So this will work perfect. It will show the spaceship uh, in, in that background. Of course, I kept the spaceship image full size. So I'm going to go to the style uh, tab of my properties inspector for the spaceship and I'm going to fit to stage and that's going to resize it to I think what will be an appropriate size here. So again, as promised, you can use effects and motion paths, but more importantly, you can combine them together. So that's what we're going to do in this case here. The first thing I want to do actually is I'm going to rotate this image 
a little bit to the left because I'm going to have it straighten out as it comes across there. So if you go to the options tab of the object itself, we can just do, let's say minus 20 degrees. That looks good. And the effect that we're going to use is we'll use uh, rotate two. So we can do a rotation of 20 degrees. So it will come back to its original position here. Let's open up the timeline and just talk a little bit about effects and your timeline here. I'm going to make this uh, about eight seconds long and I'm going to display the image of the spaceship for the full duration of the slide by pressing control E and that will extend the appearance of this object right to the end of the slide. Now, when you've applied an effect or a motion path to any of your objects, you'll see this little swivel icon next to it on the timeline. If I click on that swivel icon, we can see the actual effect. Now, in this case here, I wanted to straighten out towards the last half of the slide here. So I'm just going to slide this over and extend the effect of the rotation here. So this will be moving, but I'll just preview this so we can see what this looks like. So it looks like it'll just straighten out towards the end of the slide. That's exactly what I'm looking for here, but we're not done. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus icon and we're going to choose an entrance effect. You know, again, there's all these different categories to choose from. Entrance is usually when something's coming into frame and we're going to choose asymmetric zoom, which at first glance you might think, you know, when you do the preview of it, oh, I don't want that. That looks terrible. But the defaults are not set up, I think, appropriately. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 100%. So we're going to end with 100%. But we're going to start really small, like we're coming from very far away. So I'm going to go 10%, 10%, and uh, we'll do this uh, duration of effect for the whole slide. So it will start very small, become very big, but you'll see the rotate as well. So let's preview this and see how it looks. That looks pretty cool, but I don't want them coming from the planet. I want them coming from some distant galaxy up here in the upper left hand corner. So again, we're going to click the plus to add another effect to this. And uh, one question that might come up, is there a limit to the number of effects? Um, you know, how good is your processing power on your computer? I don't know. I've never found the limit. I've never tried to find the limit. But certainly three, four, five different effects have always worked for me. So the category of effect we're going to choose in this case is a motion path. And we're going to start with a left to right motion path, but we're going to change that. Notice you've got this little motion path symbol on the screen. It starts with a green arrow and goes to a red stop. And we're just going to, first of all, position our object to be, uh, start off somewhere in the upper left hand area. In fact, it might even be worthwhile to have it start off in such a position that it would literally be off screen. And now I'm going to select the red stop position and we'll place that maybe somewhere over here. And again, we can have the left to right effect, which is now more of a top left to bottom right effect, extend for the full duration of the slide. So now we can preview the full effect and see if we've created something pretty cool. Let's do it this time in HTML5 in browser so we can see exactly what we're going to get. And we should see the little rotation right at the end there. That's so cool. So, you know, if you feel like uh, Steven Spielberg or George Lucas one day while you're building your e-learning course, you can use these skills and create something a little bit more cinematic. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. 
visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.